Welcome back on this morning's Health Watch. Could the key to preventing cancer be just a vitamin away? Our own Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with some new research on prevention and also some warnings about what not to take. Good morning. Good morning. There was a study out of the UK, incredibly promising. A daily dose of vitamin D can cut the cancer risk by 25%. That's right. This is arguably, Maggie, the most important vitamin to all of our health in terms of preventing diseases and actually potentially treating some existing conditions. In my house, believe it or not, it is the only only vitamin we take every day and I think people are better get used to it. It's not going away. Every day we hear more convincing research. And is it enough just to take it in supplement form or do you have to get it in foods or sunlight? Actually, well? you know, 15 to 20 minutes of sunlight when you protect your hands and your face is good for us. That's where we get the D. This is one of the few vitamins that does work just as well taken in supplementary form so you don't have to get the sun exposure to get the benefits of vitamin D. Usually there's such a thing as too much of a good thing. Is that the same with vitamin D? Absolutely. In, in very high doses, this can be toxic, so you should check with your doctor. They can do do a blood test to evaluate your level and people are finding now that actually you want a higher blood level between about 60 and 100 is the number. If you take vitamin D in supplementary form, adults, healthy adults can probably take two to 3,000 units a day. Check with your doctor though because they might want to monitor your doses. What are some signs that you may be deficient in vitamin D? Well, there are a whole group of people who are at risk for low vitamin D levels. Older people, if you're pale skinned, overweight, ironically dark skinned, and those who live in northern latitudes can actually be deficient. There is another cancer headline that I, I want to talk briefly about. A conflicting reports about whether taking tamoxifen and Paxil after breast cancer is a good thing. What right. can you tell us? And it's us? not just Paxil, it's the whole class of antidepressants known as SSRIs. Conflicting results. One study found a doubling of the risk of death from breast cancer among women who are on tamoxifen and a Paxil or, or Prozac. The other one did not. So if you are on those type of antidepressants, check with your doctor, see if there's something else that can treat your hot flashes. In other words, they take the Paxil to treat the hot flashes. The hot flashes, so exactly. So because one study says it may be harmful, it's worth a discussion with your doctor. Is Absolutely. There, and are there alternatives? Absolutely. And you don't want to discontinue a medication that your doctor is on for any reason, but especially if you have breast cancer. All right, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you, you so bet. much.